Right now at 6, reaction from city leaders to deadly violence during Mochella. A 15-year-old killed. 7 News asks, how does an unsanctioned event get security help from police? Video capturing the newest victim in a surge in dog thefts. The owner calling 7 News on your side for help after an ominous phone call from the thief. Plus, complaints now surfacing about the Something in the Water music festival. We literally hopped the fences and we're like, we're about to suffocate. 7 News presses event organizers over safety concerns. This just in tonight, we're learning the D.C. police officer shot during last night's Mochella music event is now out of the hospital. That is good news, but also new at 6 o'clock, 7 News now has heard from the city's police chief about that gunfire that left a 15-year-old boy dead. You got one person who introduces a gun to a scene of a thousand people. That's, that's just a recipe for disaster. 7 News is also pressing city leaders for answers about last night's go-go event at 14th and U Streets. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford live in Northwest now. And Sam, you're also hearing from a witness about this. Yes, uh, Jonathan and uh, Michelle, a witness, said it was a frightening scene here at 14th and U. There were actually two incidents, he said. First, there was a fight that caused the crowd to panic, and about 90 minutes later, gunshots that caused the crowd to panic and him to try to save his two daughters. Witnesses said this was the second of two incidents that caused the crowd to panic. The second time, shots fired. A 15-year-old Chase Poole was killed. Three others, including a D.C. police officer shot in the leg, expected to recover. City officials said the event had no permit. An event that did not have any um, proper planning for the number of people who were here and with uh, guns involved. But a man who attended said he had to push his two daughters down and shield them. He rejected the idea that a permit was an issue. The streets were blocked off with government vehicles, uh, dump truck, government dump trucks, and MPD officers. So I felt like if there was a concern about a permit, um, who authorized the dump trucks to be here, who authorized the police presence. Chief Robert Conti today. There's been a lot of focus on permitted, unpermitted, and all that kind of stuff. We need to focus on the person who pulled the trigger. We need to focus on the person who killed young Chase. Mayoral primary tomorrow, we spoke with candidate Treyon White, who came to the scene. Someone is in a crowd at a celebration, open fire, killing a young black boy, 15 years old. And so it's, it's disheartening to see time. That's the second young person they got killed in the district just yesterday, four in the last 10 days. I spoke briefly with the Poole family. They chose not to go on camera, but they are angry, hurt, and talking about suing the city. And on a personal note, I was cleaning my house and I came across this this weekend. This was a campaign in the 1990s trying to impact the murder situation here in the city. As it turns out, it was uh, launched by uh, William Lightfoot, who was the chair of the mayor's campaign. I asked him if this had an impact in the 90s. He couldn't say exactly that it did. Obviously, murders went down, but it's something that we all need to think about from the Bible. Reporting live from Northwest Washington, Sam Ford, 7 News. Sam, thank you. And so far this year in the city, murders are up 13% from this time last year. And there have been four teens killed in just the past week. Again, D.C. police are urging the community to share any pictures, videos, and information about the Mochella shooting. The number to call is on your screen. You can also send an anonymous text to 50411. There's a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction. All right, now to another very scary situation that played out over the weekend. And this one at Tyson's Corner Center in Fairfax County. We learned that D.C. rapper No Savage, that's his name, whose real name, though, is Noah Settles, is now wanted in connection to Saturday shooting inside the mall. Investigators say that Settles opened fire after getting into some kind of fight. Now, no one was hit, but the gunshots sent hundreds of shoppers running. The police chief is working to reassure people that the mall is safe. We have a contingent of police officers that are assigned to Tyson's Corner Center every day of the week. Our Tyson's urban team and our police officers were on the scene of this shooting. This shots fired immediately. Now Noah Settles put, posted on Instagram that he was sorry, but he remains on the run and now is considered armed and dangerous.
A Landover woman reaching out to 7 News on your side for help after her dog was stolen. The thief is now demanding a ransom. As 7 News Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell reports, it was all caught on camera. In Prince George's County today, a dog napping, a three-year-old Yorkie named Avery, taken from his owner's Landover front porch, and the whole crime is recorded by a doorbell camera. It begins with that woman with the distinctive red hair spotting the little dog outside, seemingly tossing treats to lure the skittish pup in close enough to nab, then, with the help of that backpack-wearing accomplice, walking away with the little dog. The dog's owner calling police, putting up flyers with her phone number. Within hours, she hears from someone claiming to have the dog, demanding ransom and sending this video of the captive Avery as proof. Since then, the dog nappers going silent. The dog's owner asking Seven News on your side for help. I want Avery back. I want Avery back and she needs to deal with what she did. We inform Prince George's Police Command about the dog's owner's concerns and a detective is immediately dispatched. We'll let you know if the thief or dog is found. In Landover, Brad Bell, 7 News. Beautiful evening across the area right now. If you like it dry and you are missing the humidity, well, some changes are on the way beginning tomorrow. Here's our live vantage point over toward the Georgetown waterfront. Temperature wise, we're in the upper 70s at lower 80s across the board. A good amount of sunshine for the next couple of hours before sunset around 830. Clouds are building off toward the west of us. May see a stray shower or two later on this evening into the overnight, mainly west of D.C. It's not going to amount to a whole lot. The next few hours look like this. We're in the middle 70s by 9 o'clock. 11 o'clock, we're at around 70 degrees. Our wet weather chances increase. A possible weather alert for the day on Wednesday for areas of moderate to heavy rain. Tracking our brand new futurecast coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, Steve, we'll see you then. Thanks. Happening tomorrow on the Hill, the fourth public hearing will be held by the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack. Republican Committee Vice Chair Liz Cheney says that tomorrow's hearing is going to look at the Trump team's efforts to pressure Republican state legislatures and officials to reverse the results of the 2020 election. 7 News has been bringing you complete coverage of these hearings. For a recap of what has happened so far, you can just go to our website at WJLA.com. 7 News is on your side with a traffic reminder for drivers along I-95. New electronic speed limit signs will start changing Wednesday. Now, we showed you when 48 of these new signs were put in place last week along a 15-mile stretch from Caroline County to Fredericksburg. VDOT says the goal is to decrease crashes and congestion. The speed limits will be anywhere from 35 to 70 miles per hour, depending on traffic and conditions. A couple of spots in Virginia already have these these variable speed limit signs. We posted the other locations on WJLA.com. There was no way that space worked for that amount of people. Several festival goers speaking to 7 News about their concerns with something in the water. The safety issues that we brought to organizers and how attendees can now take action. Plus, a sinking boat in Ocean City, Maryland. The distress call and the rescue, all new at 6. Right now, Prince George's County detectives are investigating a murder in Clinton. Police say D'Angelo Johnson was shot and killed last night on Belfont Lane. Officers are working to find the gunman and a motive. They're asking anyone with information to call them. A reward of up to $25,000 is being offered. In Montgomery County, a car crashed into a construction area and then rolled over. It was quite the mess. This car went right through a metal fence, hit a concrete barrier, and then, as you can see, flipped trapping the driver. This all happened this afternoon right along Nicholson Lane in Rockville. Firefighters rescued the driver who was taken to the hospital, expected to be okay at last check. Police are now investigating what led to this crash. The Coast Guard rescued four people from a sinking fishing boat off the coast of Ocean City. The boat named Hot Pursuit started taking on water today, so the captain put out a distress alert. Coast Guard members rescued those on board and then towed the boat to the marina. No one was hurt, the command duty officer says, in these kind of situations, every second matters. Still ahead for us, tomorrow is primary day in D.C. and Virginia. We're breaking down everything the voters need to know before heading to the polls. Plus, thousands of people in the district for the Something in the Water Music Festival. 7 News is on your side, taking your concerns to organizers and city leaders, all new at 6. 
Well, all new at 6 o'clock for you. 7 News is hearing complaints from more than a few people who went to the Something in the Water Music Festival this weekend in the district. Tonight, our Nick Minock is taking those concerns to festival organizers and city leaders to try to get answers. You will not be able to be here tonight due to the overcrowding. Attendees of the Something in the Water Music Festival tell 7 News on your side that overcrowding was a major concern. There was no way that space worked for that amount of people. This festival attendee shared video with 7 News showing what happened when thousands of people packed Independence Avenue to see their favorite performers over the weekend. It was very right, sketchy. So you guys left because it got mad? We literally hopped the fences. We're like, we're about to suffocate. <laughs> Another concern was bathrooms were nearly impossible to find, and water was hard to find, too. Some people passed out. D.C. Fire and EMS transported at least eight people to the hospital, including six people due to heat-related issues. When in Gary Nachi and others left to get water, they weren't let back in. For safety concerns, we have to make sure that no more people enter the venue. Not being able to get back, it just didn't make sense. They told us they were at capacity, and we couldn't understand because we had paid for our tickets, and we'd also... Verified our, verified our wristband. She spent $400 on her ticket. I want my money back. That's all I want. 7 News on your side repeatedly reached out to the event organizers asking if they will refund festival attendees who couldn't get back in. And we asked what changes will be made in the future to ensure everyone's safety. We also reached out to Mayor Muriel Bowser's office. They haven't answered 7 News' questions yet. Another concern 7 News heard was pickpocketers. Raymond Scott flew to D.C. from Dallas for the festival and someone stole his phone. He pinged his phone and he said he found the thief during the festival. She had a backpack and once we stopped her and got the backpack off her, we opened it and found out it was a bunch of, a bunch of phones, 50, maybe 40. And his phone was in that backpack, he said. And 7 News on your side will continue to push for answers to see if this music festival will do anything different if they choose to come back to the district in the future. In Southwest D.C., Nick Minock, 7 News. So if you are looking for a refund or you have a concern, festival organizers have now set up a website. We put a link to that on our website, which is WJLA.com. Voters in D.C. and Virginia will be heading to the polls tomorrow for the primary elections. And 7 News is on your side with everything you need to know. Early voting in the district ended yesterday. We checked in so far more than 63,000 ballots have been received. Some of the contests include the race for mayor, several city council seats and attorney general. Polls open in each ward tomorrow morning at 7 and they close at 8. But as long as you're in line, by then you will be able to vote. And as for Virginia's primary, voters will be casting ballots for candidates from 11 U.S. House districts. Polls open tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the morning. They close at 7 o'clock. You do have to have an ID. It is needed to vote in the Commonwealth. In the meantime, Maryland's primary is July 19th, the deadline to register to vote. It's about a week away on June 28th. Early voting is from July 7th through the 14th. And 7 News has been staying on top of all of the major races in our area. We're asking the candidates some tough questions. You can find those profiles and more polling information on our website. Go to WJLA.com slash election. Right now, the Freedom House Museum in Alexandria is having its grand opening to celebrate Juneteenth, which commemorates the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. The museum honors the lives of enslaved and free black people who lived in Alexandria. This event is happening now until 730 tonight at the Shiloh Baptist Worship Center. The museum is open every day except Tuesday and Wednesday. You're encouraged to reserve tickets online. Let's talk about the weather situation because if you're a tourist and you're joining us here in D.C. this weekend, boy, were you treated to something special. Yeah, you got the golden ticket as far as the weather goes, but we're expecting some changes, a warm-up, right, Steve? You got it, and some bigger changes on the way starting tomorrow. Not only is it going to warm up, it's going to start to feel more sticky outside, and then by Wednesday, a possible weather alert for the potential for moderate to heavy rain, even localized flooding. Check out this view right now. Nothing like that out there. Blue sky, a beautiful, beautiful early afternoon make that early evening 83 degrees that was the high earlier today 87 our average nowhere close to the record of 99 degrees but keep in mind last friday we were at 99 degrees for record-breaking warmth downtown 76 degrees in gaithersburg 73 at winchester petersburg right now at 76 uh, winds are
winds are beginning to ease a little bit, especially outside of the Beltway, but a little bit of breeze out there. It makes it feel even better if you're going for a stroll this evening, cooking outside or just hanging out on the back porch. Temperatures around 75 by 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock around 70, and most of the area will drop down into the 60s, if not the upper 50s by early, early tomorrow morning. So not as cool as it was earlier today with temperatures inside the Beltway that were in the upper 50s. Now tomorrow we're looking at sunshine, a mix of sun and clouds during the afternoon hours, a warmer day, middle to upper 80s. Farther west you go over toward the panhandle of West Virginia, west of the I-81 corridor. Temperatures are going to be closer to 90 degrees with feels like readings even hotter than that. Moving into the day on Wednesday, we're dry for the morning rush hour commute. We're trending dry for the noon time hour, but look what happens as we advance through the afternoon. Showers, a few thunderstorms, then moderate to heavy rain set to arrive here late Wednesday through the evening hours and to the first part of the overnight. Some neighborhoods may pick up an inch or two of rain if this system holds together and that may lead to a little bit of flooding for many neighborhoods. We'll keep a track on this for you over the coming days. As always, you can head over to our website, WJLA.com, for an updated forecast 24-7. So first day of summer, that's tomorrow, around 87 degrees. We have a possible weather alert for the day on Wednesday due to the heavy rain, even some thunderstorms near 90 degrees. Chance for a few lingering showers on Thursday, then we dry things out on Friday. Feeling and looking great for the day on Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be a little bit warmer out there. Humidity is going to be back with temperatures hovering just around the 90 degree mark and moving into early next week. A chance for a few showers and a few thunderstorms. Scott. And now the Toyota Sports Desk sponsored by your Toyota dealers. Developing tonight on 7 News. Once again, Washington Commanders owner Daniel Snyder declining to testify before Congress for Wednesday's hearing. This comes after the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform requested Snyder to reconsider his initial decision last week. The committee is investigating the commander's alleged toxic workplace culture. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell was also invited to attend the hearing. Goodell accepted the invitation and will testify virtually. It's a big week for golf fans across the region. The KPMG Women's PGA Championship is being played at Congressional. The first round is on Thursday. Hagerstown native Ashley Greer is in the tournament, hoping to put on a show in front of her friends and family. How special is it for you to, to kind of play this tournament and you're only 30 minutes away from kind of your, your home base? It's probably the, the one I wanted to qualify more than anything. When I knew it was going to be a congressional, that was my focus. And I, you know, being playing a major championship anywhere is amazing. But in your hometown, home state, basically, I can have all my friends and family come watch. It's going to be very special. Good luck to Ashley. We will be out there all week. How about Bethesda native Katie Ledecky continuing to dominate in the pool? Just a short time ago, Ledecky won the 1,500-meter freestyle at the World Swimming Championships in Budapest, Hungary. This gold medal was her record-extending 17th world title. Ledecky will have a chance at more gold. On Wednesday, she will be in the women's 4x200-meter freestyle relay. Then on Thursday, Ledecky will swim in the 800 freestyle final. Jonathan? She's pretty good in the pool. She is. All right, Scott, thanks. Still ahead at 6 o'clock, the D.C. high schoolers just getting a big award and the help that will last a lifetime. That's coming up next. We have a big congratulations to four D.C. high school students who have received Milken Scholars Awards. Here's a list of this year's winners. The scholarship provides a $10,000 cash prize plus a lifetime of mentoring and resources, including career counseling and help with internships. Milken Scholars are chosen after a nomination and interview process based on academic performance, community service and leadership. All right, first day of summer is tomorrow. We're going to be around 87 degrees. A possible weather alert on Wednesday for moderate to heavy rain during the afternoon hours. And we clear things out for the upcoming weekend. All right, Steve, thank you. Thanks for starting off your week with us. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up next. Join us back here tonight at 11 o'clock. And in the meantime, have a good night.